Hi, David. Thanks for joining me today. Hello. Um, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Yes, just been for a walk up the hill, so I'm feeling um, refreshed and windblown. Very nice. Um, I'm just going to start straight away with, um, um, you know, your involvement with uh, AOH, and it's been it's been so great to see uh, your work with students and young artists. The workshop we did. Uh, is this something you have often done? Uh, I've done a lot of teaching over the years, um, something that I'm very familiar with as a visiting teacher. Um, I've probably been doing it for 25 years off and on, uh, although I've never actually had a proper job at an art school. Um, it's something I've, I've done because I always assumed that I wasn't going to make a living as an artist. So. Um, yeah, something I do a bit less these days. So it was really nice to revisit that, uh, talking to, to artists uh, as part of the Artists Open House. Um, I guess I've been aware of Artists Open House since I lived in Brighton, because I, I live in Kemp Town, um, which as you know, is quite a, a compact um, neighborhood, like most of Brighton, I guess. Um, and I'm, I've seen the signs everywhere for artists open houses, but I've never actually been into anybody's house. Uh, not yet, anyway. And obviously a bit difficult at the moment, but uh, maybe maybe that will change before too long. Yeah, yeah. I think I had already a question for it. Well, well, we'll come back to it. But I just wanted to ask, what did you feel it gave to those taking part in the workshops and tutorials? Uh, well, I, I guess it's a very familiar situation for me. The only unfamiliar thing is really having to do it via Zoom. Um, but you get used to that pretty quickly. And I think the conversations you have with people are always, um, yeah, they're always interesting. <clears throat> I think I, I, I always, I'm not really a professional teacher. So I, I talk about art as an artist and I, I in the same way that I talk to any artist, to my friends. Um, I think you're just there to provide a response uh, to people. And um, I think also, you know, you have to manage your expectations of what you can offer to people. Because um, I think sometimes the best response or the best uh, ideas you you get as an artist from talking to other people are from quite unexpected places, you know, where people state something that seems to be really quite obvious that you'd never really thought of before. Um, I think the hardest thing as an artist is really to ask yourself those questions, which, which you really have to. Um, once you leave education, you don't really get tutorials anymore unless you really seek them out. So um, you have to give yourself tutorials. So I think that um, the, the value for me in doing it to other people is it reminds me that I have to ask myself the same questions. Um, as regards how other people, how useful it is to other people, I guess, I don't know, hopefully it's useful to some extent. But because we did the uh, tutorials in a group, I think that's quite valuable because everybody gets to contribute and I think it's, it's good doing it as a group because you don't repeat yourself so often. Um, sometimes when you, when you teach in art school, you get a number of tutorials to do in a day and you talk to everybody separately and you end up saying the same thing almost to everybody. So the, the nice thing about this sort of online seminar was that, uh, yeah, you have to think of something different to say to everybody, <laughs> which is a good exercise. Yeah, I think it was, um, uh, um, after, after our workshop, um, I did a little interview with a couple of artists and everyone's notes was the same. Just keep doing the work, keep doing the work. And they were just like, everyone's uh, recommendation to like what they take it, it was the same thing, uh, which I guess is just sometimes hard. And yeah. it's good to hear from, you know, from someone that actually is making work continuously. Yeah. 
just get on with it. That's the main piece of advice for everybody. It's the most useful thing to, <laughs> to say to anybody, I think. Totally. Um, so I'm just going back to actually when you were talking about the art soap house and um, you've been living in Brighton for, for some time. Uh, so you, you obviously knew the art is open house, but has your perception of them changed? Um, well, I I think it changed in the sense that I'd never met anybody. Who, well, I have met people who participated in it, but um, yeah, I just it's not so much that my perception has changed. It's just that I've um, thought about it perhaps more than I have before. In the, in the sense that, um, for me, I take it for granted that I'm going to have an opportunity to exhibit my work. But, yeah, it makes you realise that that's really not the case for most artists, that having an exhibition is, um, is, is a, an opportunity that um, sometimes you're quite lucky if you, if you have that opportunity or you have to facilitate it yourself and it's maybe quite expensive and to, to be offered the opportunity to share your work with with other people is um is perhaps unusual so that's why artists open house is a you know it's a valuable is a valuable thing because people get to do it on their own on their own terms um having an exhibition in your house is a uh, is always an interesting thing when you think about it I remember when I was an art student at Glasgow School of Art in the, in, I don't know, early 90s. I think I'd first, I just left art school. And I, I guess, had this, you know, the same um, conundrum whereby I was, nobody was going to give me an exhibition when I was 23 or whatever. So I had uh, my, my flatmate, a guy I shared a flat with, he decided to have an exhibition in our toilet. Um, which obviously was an ironic um, intervention kind of thing. And then we had an opening, so everybody was invited to make artworks in the toilet. Uh, it wasn't a very big toilet either. Well, it was a bathroom, you know, so there was the bath and the sink and the toilet bowl. Um, I, I, I have vague recollection. I can't remember what I did for it, but it was, I remember we had all these artworks in the toilet. and. Um, I don't know, maybe it was for the response that you, you know, the thing, the artworks that you don't really like very much, you end up hanging in the toilet. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, I'm trying to think if we've got any artwork in our toilet. We do actually have, I think we've got some of my artwork in the toilet, although it wasn't my ambition to put it there. But the thing is that um, all art tends, you know, if the, the triumph of being an artist is where you get to sell your art to people and they hang it in their house. So in a way, the artist's open house experience, it's like it, it's exhibited in one house and then somebody buys it and puts it in another house and it's sort of bypassed the whole gallery experience. It's just gone from house, studio to house to house. Sometimes just was made in the house, I guess. So yeah, maybe the artwork belongs at home. The moment when it's in a gallery is sort of a, a, a quite a unique and unusual circumstance for 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 most artworks because most artworks if they go anywhere they they go in somebody's house you know the really special ones are in a museum maybe but um most of it's at home so it's kind of appropriate in a way that you know you have the exhibition at home that's an index uh question is um how's your second lockdown going <laughs> Uh, it's not as good as the first one, that's for sure. <laughs> I think we were all a bit more anxious during the first one because we didn't know what was going to happen and it was very new. Whereas now it seems horribly familiar, the situation. But now the weather's not very good. Um, and it feels like we're at the, really at the beginning of it as well because it's only, you know, it's not even December yet and we've still got the bad months to come. So... Um, I'm okay. I'm fine. I mean, I go for my walk with the dog every morning and uh, I've got my studio in my house and it's, it's okay. But I feel like it's, um, this lockdown's going to be much harder for everybody um, just because it's grey and dark. And I think that the thing that concerns me, you know, is people's mental health 
um, you don't really want to be, al you definitely don't want to be alone when the weather's, when it's dark and gray and cold. Um, so I think we have to make an effort to look after each other and stay in touch. And also to make some art, because making art makes you happy, doesn't it? Well, it makes me happy anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get through it by making more art, which is kind of how I got through the last one, really. But the nice thing was that back in April, the weather was really nice, and I could go and sit in the garden and um, make, I made, some, uh, I made some lino prints, actually, in the summer when it was really warm. Because I could sit in the garden, on the garden, and put all the lino plates on the line on the table in the sun, and they got soft, so I could carve them. Whereas now, in this lockdown, I can't do that anymore. So I've had to. Um, I started putting them on the radiator in the corner. Where's the radiator? There. And now it's. Uh, I can't do that. Sort of. I realise that's quite inefficient. So I bought a. Um, I bought this. I bought a hot plate. It's like, oh, right. it's one of these, it, it looks kind of fancy, but it's one of these things that you buy from, uh, from the kitchen supply shop. Uh, so in it, if you go to a, a restaurant and they want to keep your food warm on the table, they put that and it plugs in. Um, and it gets just to the right temperature to make the lino soft. So that's my lockdown purchase for the lockdown too, for the winter months. I can make my lino nice and soft and carve it up here at home in the absence of the sun. Great solution. <laughs> um, so my last question is, uh, will you be visiting the Open Houses Festival, either online or in person if possible? Obviously we don't know what's going to happen. I'm gonna try. I think I'd be quite disappointed if I don't get to go and see it. Um, I'll definitely see it online, but um, I don't know. I think we'll have to make another arrangement. I have to get in touch with all the people, and once um, once everything's over, hopefully in the springtime, can actually see all the work in the flesh. Even if I don't go to see it, at the artist's open house. Um, yeah, I think it's complicated, isn't it? It's going to be complicated. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Um, I will try. Is the answer to that question. Yes, it is complicated indeed, but finger crossed, hopefully it's going to be a bit better in the springtime. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Nice to talk to you, Edith.